Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a kind of sit down and chat with you all about how this last year away from my hubby has been for myself, my kids, and I guess my husband as well as far as I know how he's been doing. I was hoping to do more of a kind of vlog for this year but it hasn't been the easiest and to be honest I just didn't have the energy or the emotional kind of uh, um, spark to sit down and share it with people because it was it, it just was hitting me a little bit too hard so what I'll do first is I'll do a little rundown of what the situation was for the year and then I'll go into how uh, my kids dealt with it and how my husband went and then I'll do how I went at the end okay how, how I did with the whole situation at the end so what happened was about this time last year my husband um, is in the US Navy and he got recalled through the reserves to go on an active duty tour for a year to the Middle East and what that meant was that he it was an unaccompanied tour so we couldn't go with him and he was basically second in charge of the base that he was on so he was very busy and I was kind of left to my own devices here to raise the kids on my own and I, you know I was supportive of that and I understood I was thinking well I can do this I've done two deployments with it with oh, several deployments without him in the past and it'll be fine I'll be fine you know one year and it'll go really fast which it has it has gone very very fast so he left and did that at the end of April last year and now he's on his way home uh, well he's in the process of coming home so he's left his station and he has to go through a few extra stops before he comes home but the big thing that's come out of this whole situation is that we're actually going back full-time active duty Navy and the reasoning behind that had to do with the situation that arose because he did get recalled so before that uh, my husband had his own company, uh, contracting company over here in Australia. He had a contract. We made pretty good money. We didn't really have any um, money issues or any stresses like that. But when he got recalled, we had to cancel all that. He had to kind of put a hold on his business. He had to cancel his contract and go do serve his country. And of course, I was very proud of him. We're very supportive. But it just meant that that side of his career was basically put on hold and cut short. So while he was on deployment, we went through several options as to what we were going to do when he was finished. Um, as you know, as some of you know, I was I just started my own business before all this happened. So it was a, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen with that. And that was going quite well. But what ended up happening was there was two options. He could try to come back here and get a, another contract, and uh, but that's not guaranteed. And there would be a gap in pay and it would be very stressful for us financially and everything like that. Or there was the opportunity that arose for him to go back active duty full time back into the Navy. And we talked about it back and forth for quite a while. It was a joint decision and uh, we decided to go ahead and do it and for, se for several reasons. One was that it was a guaranteed paycheck and also meant going back to the Navy meant a lot of straight away benefits for my, like myself, my kids and my husband obviously. It also meant that he would get his retirement about 20 years earlier than he would if he had gone back to the reserves and he would have been eligible for that basically in the next three, four years. So when we kind of weighed up the options, it was pretty obvious that the going back active duty was the best choice. But the, that means it's a huge, huge change. First of all, I had to shut down my business, which was a little sad, but at the same time, I knew that new things were coming on the horizon, so I had to remain positive and um, means that I can continue my uh, psychology studies and hopefully use that because I actually have a psychology degree. And it, um, so there was that, <laughs> there was restarting the kids in an American schooling system, which actually works out well because my son's going into high school. I, well, he'll be starting high school when we move. Uh, well, freshmen. So f if, for those in the States, you know what high school is. Australians, high school in the States is, fr means from year nine onwards, nine, nine, 10, 11, 12. So he'd be a freshman going in with all the other freshmen, which would be perfect timing. 
and it would just mean that the kids would restart the year that they've done here in Australia just over again. I think it's in July, August, something like that. When I could forget when it starts. So that that part's okay. But then there's the moving, getting up and moving the Hulk family. So that's actually happening here in the next, oh, in May, probably towards the um, beginning of May. We don't know yet. We still don't have orders yet. We're still waiting for certain things to go through, but we do have approval and everything that's happening. So that's a huge thing. So we are moving to the US. Now what that means for us, us here in Australia, um, my mum passed away a couple of years ago, probably a year and a half now, almost two years, almost two years ago. So I just have my dad and he does have his own life and we have said that he, he can come with us or he can come over whenever he wants. I don't have any brothers or sisters. I don't really have any other family here. So it's, it's a, I, I don't feel a huge connection in that respect to here. I still miss my dad and everything like that. But um, for Sean, he has his uh, family, his mum and dad, his cousins, his uncles. I've got friends and stuff in the States. So we would have a big support system. And I'm looking forward to going back to military life because that's what I was used to for nine years. So we are going back there. We are going to Virginia. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. And that's happening in the next, as I said, beginning of May. So getting back to how this year was away from, away from him and on my own. So my kids are very, very resilient. They are very adaptable, especially my oldest. He was my rock. He was such a help. He, uh, of course, he's only 14. We turned 14 in June. So he helped, but he's, he's still a teenager, but he helped so much with everything that had to happen while his dad was gone. He, he stepped up and helped me with the cooking, with the cleaning, with the kids, babysitting. Uh, anything I asked he did I had to keep reminding myself that he is only a teenager he's a kid I can't expect too much of him and you know we worked worked it out and we worked out what was best for both of us the other kids they miss their dad they miss their dad over the year but it wasn't a huge wasn't a huge kind of emotional burden on them as far as I could tell mainly because we kept the routine going now their dad did used to travel a lot before that, so it wasn't a huge difference in that respect with him being gone. It was just the consistent time frame that he was gone. Um, my husband did come home for a visit for a week, which is almost pointless in a way because it was only for six days. And it also almost made it worse for the kids because especially my youngest, she was still very much a baby then. And for the first week that he went, he, he went back, she was crying for daddy every night, crying for daddy. Uh, but it, eventually she kind of got over it and that part broke my heart every time she was crying I cried it was a big cry fest uh, but other than that they have they have been pretty good they do ask for him but the biggest thing that helped with that is that technology these days is amazing as far as communication goes and keeping in touch with people with loved ones uh, we used WhatsApp with with Sean while he was on base and not the best connection but it was still a connection and he was able to talk to the kids all the time he talked to me twice a day once to twice a day sometimes on some weeks it was sucked because it was only for maybe three minutes and he had to leave because he was so busy but then I think as it kind of got to the end of it it was more and it, it was it was better and it kept us all going I, I don't know what I would have done without that so anyways so that helped a lot. So they really did kind of cope pretty well. There were some times that I kind of wish he was here to guide them, but then I've kind of gotten used to solo parenting a lot with him having been in the military before. I've just had to learn to do it. So they coped fairly well. Now, Sean, he, I mean, he's amazing. He's done this for many, many years. But I think he felt at this time, because it was a consistent, like normally the deployments are seven months long with the, with the Navy when you're on a ship, you're gone for seven months. He was gone for almost a, like basically a year. So it was a huge difference as far as length of time and what he missed. And what I mean by what he missed is what he missed with the kids, with their development, with their the events. He missed every single birthday. He missed all the major events, he missed Christmas and a lot of the, some of the kids, like especially Clara, who's now three, she went through a huge change um, over that year. Just from the six months that he, from when he visited, she potty trained, she's talking more, she's 
uh, just more of a little girl than a baby and even though he saw her every single day I think that that took a little toll on him I mean I can't speak for him this is just what I've, I've observed uh, I think it put a lot of stuff in perspective as far as family goes for both of us so when he does come back we want to do more as a family we want to go and experience things together as a family and just not let things slide by like you do when you get into kind of a rut and that's I guess the silver lining of this separation is that it makes you what made us realize how much we want to be together he and I as a couple and everybody together as a family so I think that really affected him and that has a positive change on him but I mean, to be honest, I'm a little surprised on how well we did through it, throughout it all because it could have gone really south really fast, but it didn't. And that has to, that's a testament to Sean for being very positive and being very active in making sure he talked to the kids and knew what they were doing and things like that. There were periods of time when he couldn't as much as he wanted to, but in general, that's what happened. Okay, so the last person. So we'll talk about how I did. Okay, so the first six months was the hardest. I went the first couple of months was okay because you're kind of getting used to the, you know, the routine and, and then about midway through that first like half of the year separation time, I felt like I was literally having a nervous breakdown. I was crying for about a week. I was crying every single day. I felt like there was a constant ache inside of me. I missed him to no end because it was and it wasn't just, it was a whole bunch of different things missing. Missing his physical touch, missing him being here, experience, because he and I are really good friends too. We watch the same shows, we enjoy each other's conversation. It's not just, oh, I miss him here to help with kids and cook dinner and like do all the chores. It's, I just miss hanging around with him. And that part ached for like, I was just, oh, constantly crying. And it was, it, it's the first time I've ever felt true depression and I've gone through a lot I have lost a daughter um, who who was very sick I, I, I have a video about that it's I, I can give you guys a link if you want but <laughs> you may not want to watch it it's kind of sad so I lost her and that i almost broke Sean and I it, it, it did but we soldiered through that um, I lost my mom I lost my nan I, you know and I get very kind of numb now to loss when it comes to people passing away and leaving me but as far as that goes with Sean, it was the first time I actually felt that ache and that depression. And I literally had to pull myself out of it. I had to tell myself, no, I can't do this. I've got kids. I've got people relying on me. What am I doing? I have to stop this. It's not forever. It's just for this one year. You'll make it. You'll do it. Done. You've done heaps worse than this. <laughs> Gone through heaps worse than this. So I did. I pulled myself out of it. But it was hard to do and I don't and I don't mind admitting that because I think it's important that people know that it does happen even to the strongest person like people always say to me you're so strong how do you do this I'm so and sometimes I'm thinking I'm so sick of being strong I'm so sick of pulling everybody else through it I just want somebody to come and give me a hug and say hey it'll be fine but unfortunately I didn't have that because my mum was usually my rock and my person who would do that and she wasn't here and the sweetest thing was with my son when my oldest when he could tell that I was having a really bad day even now he just comes up and hugs me and it makes such a difference just to have that physical <laughs> embrace of somebody who cares really helps so I did I pulled myself out of that depression and I moved I salted on but it I also really couldn't bring myself emotionally to do any videos about it because any videos about how we were doing because it just I had so much on my plate to be honest and I just I didn't feel like I could if that makes any sense now when Sean left he came home and that was fantastic but it also it was also that thing in the set, back of my mind knowing he had to leave in five days so it's almost like torture like it was nice to see him but at the same time I'm like I don't want you to go I don't want you to go and then you have to kind of let go of him again and he, and he left and it was like okay well I'm not gonna see you now until like April uh, but and then all, and as time went by it, it kind of got it was a little easier and now right as he's about to come home I'm antsy about seeing him again because it's almost harder so that's that's how I did like I, I was able to handle all the chores I was able to handle all the commitments but towards the end and even now 
there are some days where I just don't want to do it anymore. I'm just like, I, I'm sick of it. I'm just honestly sick of doing everything. I'm sick of doing the school thing and the kids and me. It's almost like we're kind of doing a loop because the funny thing is where we're going is actually where we were when I had my oldest son. So we're actually, but we're going to be living on base. So we're going to be living on base. We're going to be hopefully sending the younger kids to the base elementary primary school. We're going to send my oldest son to the high school that's nearby, which he's starting to research. I'm not going to tell you guys exactly where we're going, just for safety reasons, but it is on the East Coast <laughs> and, um, you know, in Virginia. And there's a lot of, uh, as I said, a lot of facilities, a lot of family support. I'm hoping to get a job there somewhere and kind of meet more people. I'm hoping to go back to school and get my master's in psychology and kind of continue that, that path in counseling or something. So it's a new beginning and yeah, so it, it's very exciting, very nerve wracking. Will I miss Australia? Yes, I'll miss Australia, but not not in the way that I thought I would. I'll miss the smells, I'll miss the sounds, I'll miss the the feeling of the sun. That kind of thing is different, very different to the States. Even though we are, we are still very, very similar in a lot of ways, our cultural kind of outlook on things is very different. Um, I find Australians a little bit more friendly when you like on the streets in shops I have conversations with all sorts of people but maybe I just haven't gone to the right place in the States there were there are some places that I bet are really friendly people are really friendly but where I've been in the past not the same and I'm a very outgoing talkative person people tend to want to talk to me all the time so I'll kind of miss that but I'm looking forward to going back to all the things that the States have to has to offer all the opportunities it has to offer my children all the wonderful vacation kind of spots and things we can do and experiences we can have now that we're back there and not isolated like I feel in Australia we are a lot. I have access to a lot more uh, physical, you know, like commercial things which I know that's kind of might, might sound petty but as a mum and as a person who likes things like bags and things like that you know, that's what my channel's about so it's my YouTube channel is about so that's kind of nice to have bigger access to that and then I can meet a whole bunch of people that I've met in the States. That's exciting too. I do have a few friends here that I will really miss. Um, okay, so I guess I guess that's it. I guess that's all I have to tell you guys. I know I, I do apologize. I didn't do this during the year and this is the first time you've kind of heard about it. And um, But as I said, this is the first time I've really felt like I can sit down and talk about it. So thanks for listening guys and I will try to keep you guys updated on the move. Um, if you have any questions about uh, what's happening, uh, pop them down below and I'll be happy to do that. If you'd like me to, to do another video about anything else that I've talked about, pop that down there too. And thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.